The listening section has three parts. Part 1. For short conversations, each followed by one question. Part 2. One longer conversation, followed by four questions. Part 3. One lecture, followed by six questions. You will hear each conversation or lecture only one time. You must answer each question before continuing. To continue to the next question, click the next button. In this section, you cannot use the back button to return to an earlier question. The number of questions and the amount of time you have to answer the questions will be shown separately for each section in the question time left window on your screen. Time is not counted while you are listening to the conversation or lecture. Question 1. How long do you think it will take to finish this job? Offhand, I'd say three hours. What does the woman mean? Question 2. I'm really angry with John. He never listens to me. Take it easy, Ellen. Things will work out. What does the man want the woman to do? Question 3. The professor of his class gives an open book final. And participation is mandatory. What does the woman mean? Question 4. Here we are. Home sweet home. How much do I owe you? 295 NT dollars. 295 NT dollars? Why so much? The rates went up last year. Do you have change for a thousand? Question. Where is the woman? Listen to a conversation between a university student and a professor in the professor's office. Hi, Professor Lagore. My name's Susan Coates. I have a 10 o'clock appointment. Yes, Susan. Come in. Sit down. What can I do for you this morning? I had a, a question about Tuesday's lecture on, pl on plate tectonics. My notes aren't too clear. I was wondering if I could, um, ask you a little more about it. You sure can. In fact, I'm glad you're here. Remember what I said at the beginning of the term? The only bad question is the one that stays in your brain, right? Yeah, thank you. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> well, I didn't quite get the difference between divergent and convergent boundaries of tectonic plates and what happens when they crash or, uh, bump into each other. Okay. You, uh, you know that there are four major types of boundaries on tectonic plates, right? And when tectonic plates move and bump into or, uh, rub against each other, it creates effects on the land above, such as creating mountains, causing earthquakes, forming new continents, and stuff like that. Good so far? Yeah, I understand that. 
That's why the Earth's topography keeps changing over time and why North or er, South America pulled apart from Africa. Now, you said that the plates with con, no, divergent boundaries, when they collide, one of the plates goes under the other one. No, you're mixing them up. That happens with convergent boundaries. One of the plates tends to submerge under the other one, which destroys the Earth's crust. When divergent boundaries collide, the two plates pull away from each other, which creates new crust. Oh, I see. So convergent boundaries submerge and destroy crust, and divergent boundaries pull apart and form new crust. I think I've got it. All right, so um, let's test your knowledge. In the past few million years, the country of Saudi Arabia has separated from Africa, which has helped form the uh, Red Sea. Is this the result of a collision between divergent or convergent boundaries? Um, that would be, uh, divergent, wouldn't it? Because Saudi Arabia is pulling away from Africa and creating something new, the Red Sea. Yes, very good, Susan. Now, at the border of India and Asia, there are the highest mountains on the face of the earth, including Mount Everest. What caused those? A convergent boundary. The plates of India and Asia collided, and one plate dove under the other one, pushing up the crust into the mountains. Excellent, young lady. I think you're getting the hang of this. Question 1. Question 2. Question 3. Question 4. Listen to part of a lecture from a life sciences class. Raise your hand if you're right-handed. Yup, that looks typical. Most of us, about 90%, are right-handed. It's been that way throughout history. In ever, in nearly every culture, right has been associated with positive qualities, while the left has been associated with negative, or even evil ones. In Latin, left means sinister. In ancient Japan, men could reject uh, or refuse to marry women who were left-handed. Um, in modern China, teachers try to force left-handed students to learn to write with their right hands. And, as I'm sure all lefties know, everyday items like can openers, uh, scissors, uh, computer keyboards are designed for righties. In short, 
left-handers have been made to feel left out. Get it? <laughs> it might seem straightforward to you and I, but scientifically speaking, the basis of handedness is not well understood. Most scientists define right-handed or left-handed on the basis of a person's preferred writing hand. <clears throat> but some scientists claim it should be based on the hand that is um, faster and more accurate in performing manual activities like tightening a screw or tying a knot. Still others claim that ability doesn't matter. In other words, that handedness should denote only preference. Yes, question. What about people who are anti, um, amba, um, who use both hands? You mean ambidextrous. Actually, most scientists agree that genuine ambidexterity is rare, and several of them believe it even rates its own special category as a distinct type of handedness. Uh, the reason for this is that most people can perform several functions relatively equal with either hand which causes another scientific fraction to argue that there are actually only two types of handedness, right and non-right. This group advocates measuring handedness on a continuum from 100% right-handed to 100% left-handed. On this scale, we'd say something like, I'm 60% right-handed or I'm 82.5% right-handed. Though how we'd determine who's more right-handed than another would open up a whole new can of worms. Okay, um, yes. How do people become right-handed or left-handed in the first place? Does it come from your genes? Mostly, yes. Research shows that handedness is largely genetic. Um, interestingly though, even when both parents are left-handed, the odds are no better than 50-50 that their children will be lefties. Some scientists believe there is a specific gene that determines right-handedness, but uh, the trouble is that they can't pinpoint it. They think this gene also aids in development of speech and language comprehension. Many researchers believe that handedness is a result of something called brain lateralization, which is the uh, concept that each hemisphere of the brain controls different bodily functions. Researchers have long been believed that a person's dominant hand is on the opposite side of the brain hemisphere that controls their language specialization, so that right-handed people use the left half of their brain for processing language. But brain lateralization is um, not well documented, and there is evidence that seems to contradict this concept. For instance, while it's true that more than 90% of right-handed people do process language in their left hemisphere, recent research shows that about 40% of left-handed people also process language primarily in the left side of their brain. Additionally, only 10% of lefties rely primarily on their right brain to process language. So, um, what can we make of this? Though genetics clearly play a vital role in determining handedness, environment also seems to be a frac an important factor. A recent archaeological study compared a group of modern Canadians with thousand-year-old skeletons from a British farming community. The Canadians showed right-handed dominance by a 9 to 1 ratio of larger right elbows than left ones. In the ancient skeletons, however, most right and left elbows were equal. Now, this doesn't prove that the British farmers were ambidextrous, but researchers say it does suggest that handedness can be subject to societal influence. So for many, the best hypothesis at this time is that handedness results from a complex interaction of nature and nurture. Question 1.
Question 2. Question 3. Question 4. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. In Latin, left means sinister. In ancient Japan, men could reject, uh, refuse to marry women who were left-handed. Um, in modern China, teachers tried to force left-handed students to learn to write with their right hands. And, as I'm sure all lefties know, everyday items like can openers, uh, scissors, uh, computer keyboards, are designed for righties. In short, left-handers have been made to feel left out. <laughs> Get it? Question 5. Question 6.